G'day tubers, it's Pete, it's HB Powerwall, Brisbane, Australia. It's time that I started to look at other technologies. It's time that I let myself evolve away from 18650s and to other ways of powering my home. And certainly I need to look at a managed way of replacing what I already have. And a part of that process, I've started accepting every single battery review. And Defun were the first to come to the party to send something to me over in Australia. So Defun, thank you very much for going to that extra expense and getting it over to me. But what have we got? We've got a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour. Uh, it is a DFPA 12100 is the model number. Um, and you can pick these up from defunenergy.com. Now the battery itself contains a-grade cells and is good for in between 4,000 and 8,000 cycles. That blows my mind. That's far superior than the cells I've got at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what I can glean from doing a quick tear down of this and taking a look inside and running a few tests on it. Now, if I was to be honest, I've already done a couple of tests on it. And so far, I uh, uh, behind me, I run a little 400 watt, I think 500 VA. 12 volt Phoenix inverter um, and just run a couple of tests with a fan just to see where we come at and the tests come in at one kilowatt hour. Now I just tested that because I don't have any way of testing the battery so it was just one kilowatt hour on this little kilowatt hour meter uh, which I thought was fair and that was um, actually I think that actually did that on a 175 watt load and a 75 watt load so two different fans in my workshop. Uh, with the only concern that I had was the battery management system wouldn't wake up. And after talking to a few people on DIY Powerwall's Facebook group, they actually just said, oh, well, you've just got to disconnect all the cables and reconnect it and the thing come back live. And that's exactly what happened. Defund, I did contact Defund with that issue and they said, all you've got to do is put 14 volts on the terminals uh, and let it charge and then it'll just reactivate again. However, that wasn't the case for me. So... That is what it is. So let's take a look at the battery. So the battery itself, nice sturdy handle. It actually feels like you could just lug it around, uh, which is great for a little 12 volt battery. You could use it for camping, in your caravan, whatever. That'd be great. Uh, it comes with little terminal covers, which I thought that was a nice touch. Now the terminal posts themselves have these little grooves up the side. Now at first I thought that's a really good idea. Anything you can do to stop anything mechanically hitting that terminal point would be a good, good thing. Turns out it wasn't. Um, if I kept this battery in service, I would definitely shave those lugs off, at least on the positive side. Um, what I found was, I went to put a little fuse on there just to, you know, air on the side of safety. And you just, you just couldn't get it to bolt down properly. So, yeah, Lose a mark for that defund. I think I think the I think the thought was good. The, the four bolts, they're, they're very strong battery terminals. And when we take a look inside, you can see it goes all the way through. They're very, very safe. I do like the design of them. Just those little lugs. I, I think they've got more disadvantages than advantages in this application. Let's grab a screwdriver. It's got 12 screws holding the lid on. We'll pop it off and take a look inside. With the cover off, you can see it's got dual silicon coated 7 AWG wire that's rated at 200 degrees. We've got the balance leads coming down here, all nicely wrapped. Oh, we've also got removable temperature sensors with the temperature sensors actually bolted directly to the cell. Pop a few of these cables off just to give us a little bit better access. We should be able to put that over onto the side and we'll take a look at the batteries themselves. The batteries are held down by four screws on each side with a cover over the top and there's a good amount of space between each side for impact protection. I'm glad to see that. Uh, we've also got, what have we got here? The descent. Ah, now that's good. Now Lithium Solar noticed that these were all loose. And I'm wiggling on that fairly hard. I'll push on that. And that pushed on hard enough to dent the end of my finger and that didn't even move. 
bit hard to see in there. And then we've got the positive up there. Now that one, the positive and negative being disconnected because I needed to actually get the BMS working again. So they're all, uh, they could definitely be tighter. I can just move them, but I did take those off and it took quite a bit of effort to take those off initially. So I'm happy with that. So let's grab another screwdriver, disassemble it completely, pop those batteries out and take a closer look at them. So while we're taking this battery apart, let's have a look at some of the features of the BMS built into this battery. Now, the battery itself has an eight year warranty with maintenance free, 4,000 to 8,000 cycles with 80% DOD. The battery management system itself has hardware and software protection for charge, discharge and temperature. Uh, it also has charge and discharge cutoff, overcharge and discharge cutoff, high temperature, low temperature cutoff with a built in auto cell balancer. It has a maximum charge current up to 75 amps and a continuous discharge current of 100 amps. It uses A-grade cells and all the cells are fully tested and meet the UL1642 standards. All housed in a non-flammable black metal carry case with a detachable cover. That definitely wasn't elegant at all taking that battery out. I ended up having to tip it all upside down and lift it out slowly. I like the direction that they're heading with the way the battery is secured. It's clamped down and it seems to have foam all around the inside. It'd be hard to pick up on the camera there, but it's definitely got a layer of foam in between the metal and the batteries themselves there. Actual, the actual threaded part of these cells actually seems to be some sort of rivnut construction. You can actually see it's built up. It's not just threaded through a thin piece of plate. We've got something decent actually bolted into there. And the cells themselves are in very good condition. There's no dents, there's no nicks, there's no cuts in any of the paper. Um, similarly, apart from sliding along the bottom just then, there's nothing on the bottom either. Clamp that holds it in. Has a nice thick layer of foam. It's actually got two layers of foam across the side there. Now that's the same thickness foam that is around the actual cells themselves. And I did notice when I pulled this apart, let's see if we can actually see in here. We've got layers of foam across the bottom as well. It looks like one layer. One layer thick that is, one layer deep. So, very heavy, well constructed box. You can see I've slid it around a bit on the bench, having a look at it and having a play already. And that's a better look there at the front of it. There's no model number really on the BMS and it doesn't come with a Bluetooth adapter. They do sell a model with a Bluetooth. I would have, if, if I was gonna buy this, I'd buy the Bluetooth model, not this one, because I like seeing what my BMS is doing and I don't actually know what the settings are in this. But it says here, lithium battery, uh, four string, 100 amp, same port, type LiPo 4, 3.4 volts, with a serial number underneath it. All the screws are mounted very firmly, and that's not coming off. Similarly, the only thing here is my OCD. They could have flipped one of these cables around to stop this kink here. But apart from that, I don't see any issues with the build quality of this particular battery. These are the terminal bolts, and although there's no uh, washers, it does have the serrated component to the to the bolt so that is not going to back off very easily at all and that's the same for all of them the bolts holding the actual mounting points down are nice and long they're probably three times longer than they need to be with a uh, spring washer and a flat washer so there is no chance that they're ever going to back out and if they did back out they would take a long long time to vibrate out the last thing to test and it's always my favorite thing to test is the claims of the manufacturer on what the actual capacity is of the cells. My solution will be an iCharger X8, a couple of balance leads, I'll get it all wired in, and then we'll set this to maybe 20 amps, set it to discharge, and see what figures we make. Oh, connect it up. Uh, disappointingly, I couldn't use the standard balance lead just because that pin offset was a little bit different to the iCharger. So it's all wired in. I've just basically got, and for some reason, if anybody was interested, black insulator is actually positive, just to confuse the kids out there. And that's negative. Ask me now, I know. So we've got all that hooked up. Now this has been cycled a good six times. And it's been charged back up again, so it's fairly close. So the BMS eh, would be appearing to do its job at seven millivolts spread between the cells now let's hit charge and charge it back up uh, life po4 yes charge current you are never going to be able to see this change the current 
to, to about 10 amps, I think. This is running off a, um, a laptop charger. There we are. We'll charge that back up to fully charged. And then we can run a full discharge test at, maybe we run three, one at 10 amps, one at 20 amps and one at 30 amps, which is this is capable of doing via regen. Only took about 20 minutes to top it off with an extra 1.6 amp hours put into the battery. A change of location from our regenerative discharge test. I've got it on my 10 kilowatt hour shed battery as I affectionately call it. So we just got the power, we'll come out of the, this battery here, through the eye charger, back out this cable, back into the bottom of my distribution box, and then it goes back into this battery again. For this test, We'll be running 10 amps first, then 20 amps and 30 amps respectively. And we'll be going down to 2.5 volts per cell. And we are in regenerative mode now. Well, I like when a plan comes together. We're exactly 10 hours later. Well, we're about three and a half minutes shy. We've got 9 hours and 56 minutes and 23 seconds. We've got 99.3 amp hours out of the battery. That's not bad, but it is at only 10 amps. I would like to see about the same 100 amp hours with 20 amps. So let's charge it back up and retest. I don't know who needs to know this, but it took 102 amp hours to recharge the battery with 14 millivolt of spread. Maybe I could put it on slow charge or slow balance and it'd get a bit better. Change the settings to 20 amps and let's go again. The second load test is finished. And I saw the spread get out to about 160 millivolts. Uh, cell four seems to be the one, uh, cell four, the one on the left, uh, seems to be holding the battery pack back, but we've got 98.8 amp hours out of the battery. So again, that's within the error of margin. Start the final test, 30 amps. He's open for 100 amp hours. It's a big spread quickly, 62 millivolts under load. Well, that impresses me. We come up with 100 amp hours almost on the dot at 30 amp discharge rate. So it took three hours and 20 minutes to discharge. And we got 200 millivolts between the highest and lowest cell. So again, cell four is the lowest, followed by cell one, and then cell three, and then cell two is the highest. But, I don't know what to say. I'm actually impressed. I'm very happy that that has met that, that expectation of 100 amp hours. As I was removing the iCharger X6, I could feel a little bit of extra heat coming from the batteries. You're about 41, and don't take these temperatures as gospel. It is the cheapest iPhone device I can get that is a thermal camera. But that, that cell there is the warmest. You'd expect the middle ones to be nice and warm. So I wouldn't be too alarmed by that heat, and it's certainly not too hot. But my wall there is, I don't know, 20 odd degrees. It's a fairly coolish sort of a night here in Brisbane, Australia. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too alarmed at all at that little bit of excess heat. I've been cycling these batteries for about two solid days. Uh, charge, discharge, charge, discharge through the three cycles. So that's to be expected. They haven't had a break. So I'm actually really impressed with that. I think that's great. I wonder how they would go whilst in there rather than just being outside. That might be a factor as well. That might be something I can test. Putting this battery back together, 
I couldn't be more impressed with the product that was provided me for review. Uh, it has 100 amp hours, as it says on the box. That alone is just awesome for me. Uh, too many batteries out there say it's 100 amp hours and provide 75 and the like. It happens all the time. The build quality is fantastic. The handle's great. It's got a good presence about it. It's a very energy dense battery with the only thing I can say that this battery needs to be a, a, a truly complete battery is an internal fuse. Apart from that, I love it. I would be happy for anybody to come and pick this up if you were in Brisbane, Australia and you wanted to go camping or whatever and you needed to test a lithium battery, feel free to come and grab it and borrow it off me on a handshake deal like all my other gear. And on that note, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.